Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Wisconsin and I covering the 2018 elections at the Milwaukee Public Library. Lakeisha Myers of Milwaukee is a Democrat running in the 12th Assembly District. Lakeisha, welcome to Wisconsin and I. Thank you for having me. Your Facebook campaign site says schools are the victim of neglect and fiscal starvation. Can you explain that? Now, you work for MPS. I do. You do. I do. And so you've worked for MPS for how, how long? Uh, about two years. About two years. Mm -hmm. Neglect and fiscal starvation. Yes. Explain. Fiscal starvation, first of all, and neglect are because of the state budget that we've had the last few cycles. MPS has lost, I don't know how many millions of dollars over and over again. That tra those dollars translate into teaching staff. That translates into uh, teachers for arts, music. Um, now where we used to have music teachers and art teachers in every school all the time, full time, now you get maybe a part-time or maybe a quarter-time music or art teacher. So that takes away from what the students were offered versus when I was in school, we had music teachers there every day, five days a week. We had nurses that were there every day, five days a week. So a lot of the essential services that go along with teaching staff, those resources are now being pulled away. You also have fewer teachers that are in the buildings, especially for your middle and high school levels. So you have 45, sometimes 50 students in a classroom. So I don't know about you, <laughs> but that's a lot to handle. And as a classroom teacher, I know that's a lot to handle, uh, especially when you deal with students that have uh, special needs, you have students that have dealt with trauma. Uh, we're being, a, MPS is a trauma-informed system, so we deal with students that have dealt with adverse conditions and poverty and trauma. We don't have the resources to deal with that. You can't just expect that a teacher who learned everything, you know, for their content area in a textbook to then pile on and have to deal with the issues that happen every day. So we do need the, the additional resources to do, deal with that. Is, that. is that a matter of additional money or is there other programming needs that uh, go hand in hand with more money? I think that it's a combination of both. I think it's a combination of both. When you look at, um, for instance, in talking with people who are in the, like uh, trade unionists, and talking to them, they're looking at bringing back trades into public schools. And I often have to remind them that Milwaukee is the only district in our state that cannot raise its own referendum to, to raise additional money to put those trades and skills courses back in their school system. So we will forever be last if the state continues to kind of strangle us and we have to beg them for what we need. We're the largest school district in the state. I think it's only fitting that we have the resources to make our district successful. The Choice the Voucher program started in Milwaukee, it expanded to Racine, now it's statewide. Um, are you a supporter of Choice? In its original form, I see where uh, former Representative Polly Williams was going with that. Mm -hmm. However, in its current form, no, we can't afford it. We cannot afford to consistently give money here, there, and everywhere and expect the competition to work. Um, I read Alan Borzik's um, Journal Sentinel columns weekly that he writes, and I'm like, yeah, Alan, you're right. We can't continue to support this going haywire the way it's going. Um, I think we have a public school system. We need to invest in our public school system. We have the, the system where we have it now, uh, where, you know, originally you had to meet an income threshold to be a part of the voucher system. That's really no longer the case now. The, the, it's kind of gotten more and more and more. So now you have people who are solidly, solidly middle class and upward uh, of that to be able to send their kids to a private school. And I think we can't continue to do that. Would you freeze it or phase it out? Both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, freeze, so start with a freeze and eventually start to reinvest in our public school system. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm fascinated. You work for the Department of Corrections. Yes, I did. Um, one of the big issues next in the next state budget is going. Do we need a new state prison? Uh, Wapan and Green Bay are built in the 1800s. We're closing the two juvenile prisons. Mm -hmm. Do we need a new state prison? 
I don't think we need a new one. I think we need to look at uh, some criminal justice reform. And when I say criminal justice reform, I'm looking at not locking up individuals who've already paid their debt to society for their original crime. Yeah. We don't need to have them go back to prison for crimeless revocation. So we need to look at that. We also need to look at a possible system of trying to force the governor's hand, if that's ever a thing, uh, to get him to make the parole board meet. We have people that are in prison under the old law, uh, which was prior to truth and sentencing. We have people that were under the old law but are not getting parole, and they are eligible for parole, but we're keeping them locked up longer. Um, I think we need to look at that and try to revise that. I th also think we need to look at the length of time that we have people serving. Also looking at, and on the flip side of that, with the staffing that we have, we don't have enough correction staff to deal with the, the, the amount of people that we have now. So I think we need to try to look at some alternatives to that. There are calls to close the Milwaukee Secure Detention Facility. Do you have a pos position on that? I haven't really uh, looked at that when I've, I'm not familiar with MSDF as because I haven't worked there. I worked at an uh, uh, institution that was right outside of Madison, which was a minimum. Um, I know that I've heard some of these situations with MSDF with the infrastructure that's there. Uh, perhaps we need to look at infrastructure. Uh, I, I, I can't really say whether we need to close it yet or not. Part of the debate is, part of this debate is whether we should legalize recreational marijuana and medical marijuana. Your position? My position is I look at it for Wisconsin as an agricultural state. I know that we can't have an industry and we have a niche that we can look at for using industrialized hemp. Um, that being the non-THC factor of the hemp, you can use it yes. for paper, you can use it for different things. Right. Um, I think we should decriminalize the use of marijuana where we have people that have gone to prison for long stretches of time for having it. I'm not quite at the point of legalizing it totally just to have it for a free-for-all. Um, medical use, absolutely. I think I've seen some studies that say that you know you can use hemp oil and different types of it for to help uh, people with medical issues, especially like cancer patients, uh, people that have other diseases like that it eases pain. I understand that, um, but I don't think I'm at the point where I want to say let's just open it up uh, for free and for free and clear use for recreation. Uh, against the backdrop of mass shootings and school shootings, do we need to change Wisconsin gun laws? Oh, I think we do need to institute a 48-hour waiting period. Okay. We need to close the gun show loophole. Um, things, accessories for guns like bump stocks, you don't need those. Um, and I also think that assault rifles, we need to look at who has assault rifles and what their clear uses for. Military-grade weapons were never meant to be in consumer hands. And that's just my honest opinion. There's no need for me to have an assault rifle uh, because it, it was created to kill. And we don't need to have those on our streets, you know, for random use for everyday citizens. I think uh, people do have the right to protect themselves. We do have a concealed carry law. Wisconsin is also an open carry state. I think if you follow the rules and you are a responsible gun owner, you have the right to have an arm. You should be able to have that. I just think people need to make sure, especially where children are involved, like if parents have guns, they should have the... Um, the, the locks, locks on them, uh, make sure that they're out of the way so kids don't have the ability to just go over and grab them. Um, but I think that's part of being a responsible gun owner when you consciously are, you know, know what you're using it for to protect yourself. I understand that wholeheartedly. There's an impasse in the Capitol over how to pay for our highways and bridges. How would you pay for them? Uh, the indexing of the gas tax would help us with that. That's what its purpose was for. Um, and that was a bipartisan uh, issue when it was raised, I want to say back in the 70s, when we started indexing started, gas taxes. And it was ended in 2006. Ended in 2006, right. So I Would you also raise the gas tax? Slightly, probably, because I think our roads and bridges, we don't have the infrastructure. Wisconsin is interesting in the fact that we had this golden opportunity when we had the federal and state level on board. Uh, I believe that was at the end of Governor Doyle's uh, watch, where we could have had a... Uh, statewide infrastructure to have uh, light rail and I don't know why he didn't implement that before he left but we do uh, sorely need that because we don't have a way for our civil servants to get back and forth to Madison without using those roads and highways every day 
and we don't have a centralized place for people to, you know, those hubs to get folks back and forth. And I think that's something that we're behind the times in. There's a buzz in the Capitol about tolling for highways. How do you feel about that? I've often wondered why we don't have that, uh, at least one or two, uh, especially since you have to go through Illinois. We pay them billions of dollars every year uh, to pay for their roads. Uh, that is a possibility, I think, for people that come across the border from Illinois and other places to use our uh, wonderful lakes and visit our zoo and things like that. I think that's uh, a draw that we could see possibly from coming folks coming from the Illinois border to come up to Wisconsin. I could see a toll. Local governments have been living with levy limits, controlling their, their property tax levies since 2006. Mm -hmm. They say it hurts their ability to provide local services. Some local officials do. <laughs> Especially you, the city of Milwaukee. Would you loosen it or get rid of levy limits? I don't think we should have a limit. Uh, we should allow local governments to be able to do what they need to do for their municipalities to function. And, I, and I'm speaking as a city of Milwaukee resident. I understand what it's like to live in the city when you when folks from out, outer parts of the state kind of have a disdain for Milwaukee, and I don't think they should. I would take this point of privilege with you to educate the rest of the state that the city of Milwaukee and the county of Milwaukee, uh, we have 40, we raise 40% of the revenue for our state. So you can't exist without us. Hmm. So I need them to understand that we, we, we have to work together. There has to be a togetherness and understanding that Milwaukee is the largest city in this state and you need to appreciate that and understand that and i will always be a champion for my city and hope that we need to you know get the respect that we deserve and the return on investment that we give the rest of the state um question on health care does state government have a role a responsibility to recruit and re retain physicians nurses and other health care specialists I think we do. Um, I think we have a role and responsibility because we have our population is aging, as we know. And even going back to the point of working for the Department of Corrections, that is, if you go on WISC jobs, they have dentists and physicians. There's a constant call that we need someone to work with our population, and we don't have enough of them. So I think if there is anything that we could do, we should try to uh, to recruit and retain doctors and nurses and other health care professionals to our state. What about health care in the rural areas where the population is older, the young people are leaving, household income is not the statewide average, more health care provided by Medicaid, Medicare. Yeah. Thoughts on how to continue, maintain health care in rural areas? Absolutely. I think if we could come up with some sort of incentive program uh, for a state like Mississippi, or for instance, uh, I went to college there. One of the programs that they had there was uh, medical students that were recent grads from medical school after they'd done their residency, or they did their residency in rural areas. So there was a concerted effort to have folks go and get the, hel get the help that they needed by having some of these younger doctors go into rural areas uh, to, to learn, to practice. And it also, it was a, it was a um, a good thing for both sides. So you had the health and well-being of those populations that was not being ignored, and you also had an influx of personnel that was there to come in and help those people. The four billion in state and local tax breaks and incentives for Foxconn. Do you think any of the <laughs> constituents of the 12th Senate District will get jobs at Foxconn? Will it help your assembly district? It would help us if we had uh, the ability to get people there. I think with Foxconn being down in Mount Pleasant, one of the consistent issues that we're having, and not just with Foxconn, with a lot of the uh, employers that have moved outside of the city, is transportation. And that's going to be a clarion call. What can Foxconn do to work with local municipalities, that being Racine, that being Milwaukee, where you have people that want to work are we going to work with the counties to get the bus systems to go down there to Foxconn? I haven't heard a plan yet about that happening. I know one of the uh, legislators was looking at the possibility, I believe a year or so ago, about making a portion of Mount Pleasant or somewhere outside of there a satellite city to Milwaukee. I don't think that went over too well. Hmm. But uh, 
we have to try to figure out something and try to work with each of the municipalities to get transportation. Transportation will always be an issue. And finally, do you, uh, you're challenging an incumbent. Yes. Do you uh, want to highlight differences between you and the incumbent, Mr. Kessler? Absolutely. The differences between Mr. Kessler and I are that he is an excellent jurist. And looking through the prism of a person that has been a judge, he likes to tackle large-scale issues of gerrymandering and redistricting have been his um, magnum opus, if you would. Um, however, a lot of the day-to-day -day bread and butter issues of people in the 12th district have continuously been ignored. Um, you know, people will call, they are not responded to or attended to right away. He has not looked at a lot of, you know, we're talking about transportation issues. We're talking about working with local municipalities. He said it himself in a Wiz Politics interview that until we fi fix redistricting, everything else will have to basically wait. And I only ask him, how long must the people of the 12th district wait? Because he's been in office for about 14, 15 years. And Brown Deer Road, the businesses have all gone and just about disappeared. Uh, we had restaurants leaving in the middle of the night. No one was notified. A lot of the entertainment spaces and restaurants and day-to-day -day things that people, after you get off work, you want to go spend your money in your own district. That's not the case for people in the 12th. They have to go to the edge of the county to go to the grocery store, and a lot of times outside of the county. They're spending their money in Waukesha County because they're going to Menominee Falls and other places to spend their money. And again, that's not helping the, the city, that's not helping the district itself. Thank you. La Keisha Myers of Milwaukee is a Democratic candidate in the 12th Assembly District. The primary is August 14th. La Keisha, thank you for talking to Wisconsin. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.